Hey, everybody. Uh, this is my second time ever going live in order to build out some Glide apps here. Uh, this is the second time I've used YouTube. I've done some Twitch stuff in the past, but uh, I wasn't very successful with it. So we're going to actually try some YouTube live. So feel free to add anything you'd like in the chat as we go ahead and start building things. And I'd be happy to show you different ways that you can use Glide to achieve whatever it is you're looking to build. Um, so yeah, so definitely leverage that chat throughout this experience here. Uh, first off, can you please just let me know if you're watching live here, is my screen backwards? It's, it looks like it's backwards to me, <laughs> but it's possible that it's just me. And uh, so I just wanna make sure that you can, you can see what it is I'm doing here. I know it looks, it looks like my camera is right but my stream looks reversed. Screen looks fine. Fantastic. All right. Well, welcome to uh, everybody who is joining. Um, again, if you have questions or want to learn anything about Glide itself, uh, feel free to throw that in the chat. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to be getting some basic users as well as some more advanced users. And I'm looking, and if I don't get any questions at all, I'm just going to start building an app idea that I had last night. Um, I live in Atlanta and there's lots of food trucks in Atlanta and south of Atlanta as well. And there's really no great resource to compile all of those uh, food trucks mobily, right? Um, there's a couple of websites out there that are like for food trucks nationwide. But I'm looking at, I was looking over the map and things and I saw that uh, no one's really leveraging it. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to build an app that's devoted to like south side Atlanta food trucks and then allow those food trucks to um, promote when they'll be or where they'll be on a schedule and, and so forth. So um, if I don't get any questions, I'm just gonna start flushing out this app a bit and then you can kind of see my thought process that might be kind of beneficial as well. So uh, again, welcome to, looks like we have a couple of new people in the chat. Again, if you um, go ahead and throw anything in the chat that you want me to build, otherwise I'm just gonna get going here and you're just gonna watch me build. And I'll stop. I mean, I'm planning on being interrupted several times, I'm assuming, throughout this stream here with your questions, and that's perfectly okay. So um, I'm, I'm happy to stop what I'm doing and dive into one of my other apps here to show you maybe how I built something previously. I'm, that's kind of what I'm fully expecting here. All right. So it looks like there's no questions yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and start building. So the first thing I like to think of here when I'm building out a new app is to figure out, okay, who's going to be using the app? Um, what does the user screens need to be? Uh, what sort of uh, components do they need to be? Um, I know a lot of developers might want to like create wireframes and uh, maybe sketch things out. I don't really work like that. <laughs> um, I'm, if, if a client wants to hire me um, and they provide me a wireframe, that's awesome because then I have a vision for what their vision is. But otherwise, I just kind of have it all in my head, right? Um, but what I'm looking to do here is have an app where we have two different types of users, right? We have users that are looking for a food truck, and then we have users that belong to a food truck and they're looking to advertise their services. And so just kind of thinking down the way here, um, the ultimate goal is that they can search for a food truck or that a food truck can post where they'll be. So that way if someone's searching for them, they know exactly what their location is, their hours, and that kind of thing. So we need to create that database first before we even do anything related to Glide. Um, I still like to leverage Google Sheets first. I know that with Glide, you can always build a new app from scratch and build it with just Glide tables. Um, and this is good for like really simple apps, uh, or if you already have some established Glide tables and you wanna bring that data in. But I found that still starting with a Google Sheet is helpful because you never know down the way if you need to end up using a Google Sheet formula or if you need to use some third-party integration that sends data back to the spreadsheet because Glide just doesn't have that yet. Um, also helpful if you need to bulk copy and paste things because Glide does not yet have the ability to import data nor do they have the ability to, uh, to paste a bulk CSV file, let's say, into a Glide table. So in that regard, Google Sheets is still kind of king. Um, I do know that Excel is coming out soon. And after Excel, I believe Airtable is next as well. Um, so those would be really nice 
uh, in the future if you are leveraging those platforms for, for your building. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna start with my Google Sheet here. And I always like to start with the user sheet. So I'll say users, and this is really app users. Um, yeah, so it looks like, yeah, so app users, these are people who are logging into the app, right? And for your users, you definitely need to have their email address, the name, and the um, and their photo. You need to have those three columns in order for you to complete the user profile screening glide. I'm going to be asking for much more information besides that, but this is good to get started. All right. In addition uh, to user sheet, um, I probably will need to have, you know, if a user is a food truck owner, they'll probably want to have like, you know, their food truck info. And this would be um, the Zoom. Yeah, you bet. How's that? That better? <laughs> okay. So food truck info. So this would be like if I am a food truck owner, like what's my information here, right? Um, and then we'll make some relations based on the email address of the food truck owner to the, uh, to the, to the food truck itself. All right. Eventually, we're going to want to have maybe food truck menu. I might give my food truck owners the ability just to link out to a menu, or maybe if they don't already have it linked out somewhere, they can build one within the app. That could be neat. Um, push notifications. So Roshan, do you have a plan to create push notification for Glide app? Well, I don't have a plan for it because I am I don't work for Glide. <laughs> so I, that would be fantastic. Yes, it is an Apple issue. It's always been an Apple issue. They just they don't allow push notifications on any progressive web app for any company yet. Uh, it's all just through their native apps, through the App Store. Does it allow push notifications? Now, there are some hacky workarounds you can do. Uh, you could do like email notifications. You can do SMS notifications if you subscribe to those kind of services. Uh, you could also wrap your app in a native wrapper. There's some websites out there called like Nativator, and they promote the ability to use... Um, I think things like it's either push bullet or one signal or something like that that do push notifications through their wrapper. I'm not familiar with that. It's out of my hands at that point. Um, I haven't really played around with it. That would be kind of something interesting, but right, it's an Apple limitation, unfortunately. Okay. I know, I know it would be super helpful once we get it. We don't have it yet, though. All right, so food truck menu. Um, eventually, we might have something like a schedule. I'm imagining or a food truck uh, can say, hey, this is my recurring schedule. So like every Wednesday, I'll be available at this location. Um, might want to have events where if there's a food truck event where multiple food trucks will be there. You know, they, they could have food trucks that subscribe to that event, maybe. Okay, so let's start with just these first couple of things. All right, so user, um, we have our email name and photo, and then we'll probably have some sort of column here that links out to the food truck itself. So we'll probably need to know what their role is. Are they just an app user, or do they actually want to have a food truck? Um, yeah, we'll need to go back. Come back later. Okay. Um, so we'll need to either create a role and that role can designate, or if they just say that they have a food truck, then we could link out to that. We need to play around with this a little bit, maybe. Okay. So now that we have at least some assemblance, all right, so the food truck info here, uh, we need to create the column headers for this. Uh, we'll probably have something like food truck name. Since we're in the food truck sheet, you don't necessarily need to have this food truck preliminator here. We could just do something like name. Um, an about page, maybe a featured photo. Uh, we could do something like 
a gallery. So a photo one. We can have it link out to like a few different photos, like a gallery, let's say. Maybe we maybe they're stationed at a particular location always, like their home location. And they can specify what their home location is. But we can do some fun things with this. Uh, David Siegel just released this. Um, if you follow my channel, I did a video on it. They did a uh, he created this fetch column. It allows you to. Uh, fetch JSON from from public APIs, or if you have a private API, if you know how to put the code into the URL, and I was able to figure out how to like grab an uh, an address based off of a location. So I might show you how to do this if I have time here today. Otherwise, we'll save that for part two of this series. But that'd be kind of neat here. I'm, I'm imagining we'll want to leverage this feature, right? So if the food truck is at a certain location, they could say, I, here, here I am. It generates the coordinates. It makes the address look pretty on a map too, and then send that out to the users. Or the food truck can, can type where they're at, and it places that in the location as well. OK, so their home location. And then maybe if they want to create a menu, they can. right? So again, we'll need to have some sort of food truck ID. Uh, imagining this will be like some sort of row ID that we create here for the food truck info. Uh, we might need to also include now uh, name. Maybe this would be like company, food truck company name, right? Versus the owner. So we have owner name, owner email, and then maybe business email or uh, contact email. What I'm thinking is, is that we'll want to have two different email columns here. One that links the the app user to the owner email, but then they'll want to have a separate contact email that actually gets displayed on their profile. And this will be kind of kept hidden on the back end. All right, uh, that should be fine. All right, so for then for menu, we can just do something simple. So we'll say something like food truck ID. I'm, I'm planning on putting in a row ID here on the food truck info app or sheet. Uh, the food truck ID. We can have the entree or no. This is the this is the uh, food item item description photo. This something like that, and then. We'll want to maybe have them select the item type for categorization purposes, which means we can also create a choices sheet. This is usually my catch-all sheet that I do for a variety of purposes. Sometimes I use it just for the choice component. Sometimes I'll include other information here for like back-end logic kind of things. All right. Um, I'm going to pause. Does anybody have any questions before I keep continuing with this? Now that you see me start think, planning out this app and start fleshing it out, my ideas, any questions as to what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, the reason why I'm doing it? Or does this spark any interest on your end? No. Okay, cool. All right, choices. So the one, one that I'm thinking of here off the top of my head here is like item type. Yes, drag and drop to freeze rows. This is my, I, I highly, highly, highly suggest this. Um, so I, I did that with all of my, with all of my um, sheets here, because in that way, as I'm scrolling, obviously, it's frozen. I believe you could also do something like under is it under format. I forget where it's at. I think you can fr here freeze one row, two rows, up to the current row. But otherwise, just drag and drop. And so you just kind of hover over this dark gray bar here and just drag. I wish Excel had this. They don't have that, right? Excel, you have to go through the menu and freeze one row or something like that. Yeah, view, freeze. So um, I drag and drop all, even when clients share their sheets with me, I just I kind of go in and I freeze their first rows because it drives me nuts when it's, when it's not frozen. Um, all right, so choices, item type. We'll give them some 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 cool things, right? I know. Uh, so item type, we have 
sides. Let's do this. Um, side. Let's the appetizer side entree dessert and then beverage like this. Uh, maybe we also in the food truck menu that I'm thinking about it. Do we want it to like as featured? The specialty, something like that. So this might be like a checkbox column. That's what I'm thinking. All right, let's go in and start um, adding this to our Glide app. So I'm going to create a new app here. Let's call this ATL Food Trucks. Apparently, it's not one word. That's fine. And then make sure phone is fine. Google Sheets. And we'll just select that file. That's what I love about Glide, right? How is it not my first hit? Okay, here we go. Select. All right, let's see what Glide gives us. Everything. Huh? All right, so eventually I'll do some sort of onboarding here. Um, here we have a food truck, our food truck info and our menu. Obviously, I'm not going to want these as tabs down here. Let's hide those for now. Choices, obviously, is not going to be something. Um, so under food truck info, imagine this would be a list of all the food trucks that we have here. So let's start formatting some data. So in users, our email should be our email address, right? Uh, name and photo. In case you missed my post yesterday, um, Glide did release a new feature, or not, I mean, I guess an, an enhanced feature where now the user profile tab is in your menu down over here, which is fantastic because before the only way to uh, set your user profile is you had to first come into your settings, uh, privacy, public with email, and then you know, allow Google shine it, sign in or something, right? Um, but then you had to hit the menu, hit the avatar, and then you were there. That was the only way to approach this user profile sheet. So it's kind of buried and a lot of novice users missed setting this up because it's, again, you have to know to click on this menu and know to click on your avatar in order to select the source sheet. So what's fantastic is that now in your tabs view, under your menu, you have this locked user profile uh, screen. Can you rename it? I haven't even tried renaming it. Profile. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I guess not. <laughs> no, that's why, that's why there's a little lock icon, I guess, right? All right, so you have user profile. So now when you select this user profile tab, it opens up this uh, panel where you can select your source sheet as well. Um, so this is probably make that a little bigger, too. All right, so I can select my users. Uh, you can see it finds my name, email, and photo. Great. And then what's cool is that you can allow image upload or not, which is neat. So if you don't want them to upload their image anymore, you, you have the ability to not to. But I'll do it for now, that's fine. Okay, so I imagine we wanna have some sort of user onboarding here, so that way we can have them select what role they are. You know, Are they here to browse or do they wanna select a, uh, a food truck? It, I'm guessing we want to make this public too, because there's no need for users to sign in unless they have a food truck or if they want to save their preferences. Um, I know Glide is going to be offering an enhancement to this at some point. I heard down the road um, this privacy controlled thing. There's going to be like a third option here at some point. Um, right now we just have public and public with email, which means yes, your app is fully public, or yes, you have to sign in. I think there's gonna be a third option that says like optional sign in, where when you select it, it'll be public, but it'll have the option to sign in um, like through this menu over here, which would be nice. Uh, for now, if you need the app to be public, what we have to do is leave it as public with email and then like last second, change it to public. Um, and even then it still gets a little wonky because Glide wasn't built for that. It's kind of a hacky workaround, but 
we'll go with it. All right, so what I'm thinking is we'll set it up with public with email, and then eventually last second we'll switch it to public. Um, there's a variety of ways I've done onboarding in the past. If I have them sign into the app where it's required, then usually the first thing they see is like a user onboarding where they have to enter in some information and kind of go through some screens. But since it's a, I want this to be a public app, uh, I'm not really going to have them set up a user profile. So really what I might want is just some generic screens that they kind of go through, like a generic onboarding, like, hi, welcome to Atlanta Food Trucks. So your number one app for finding a food truck near you. Then they swipe and says, it's easy. All you have to do is just search for a food truck. And then you swipe again, like, hey, let's get going. Or maybe that, and then a second button that says, I am a food truck. And then maybe there's where they'll sign up. Something like that. So to do that, there's a variety of ways we can do that. I'm thinking what might be nice is to have a swipe screen, like a kind of a generic swipe screen. So to do that, um, I might have a sheet here called onboarding, where each row will be its own like swipe kind of deal, right? Um, I noticed that we have some more viewers uh, in our chat. Welcome. Um, I'm just fleshing out an idea that I had last night about searching for food trucks uh, in South Atlanta, but um, feel free to add to the chat any questions you have. This is what it was originally supposed to be intended for. Um, and I'll be happy to stop what I'm doing and show you some different tips and tricks about how to use Glide or explain some things that maybe I've done in some previous videos or some previous apps and happy to do that as well. So I'm watching chat over here. So feel free to add those things as we go. And if you have no questions, I'll just can keep on continue building. So feel free to interrupt me. I'm happy to stop what I'm doing and, and show you a few things. All right, continuing on, uh, onboarding. So I'm gonna create like a generic onboarding screen, maybe just like three slides, right? So I'll have like slide number, um, freeze my first row. I'll have slide title. Might even make this like a rich text, but you can keep it as two separate things. Uh, slide description or caption maybe, and slide Image. Let's give our sheet a refresh. And so maybe we'll have that be the first thing they see. So the tricky thing is, is how you dismiss it, right? So they'll always see the onboarding unless we can find a way to dismiss the onboarding in a public app. If it was a private app or one they need to sign into, it's a little bit easier because we can bring in the user profile email um, and then do some relations and things. So we might have to do some sort of count with the user specific value. And then if it equals four, then hide it. That's the thing about tab visibility. With tab visibility, it, it almost you almost need to have, it's all based upon user profile, right? So for example here, if I want to create a onboarding tab, right, which is leveraging this onboarding screen here, and I enter in some slides. This is like slide one, welcome, Oop. easy. So, I'll just pick some random images for now, just so you kind of see how it's going to be fleshed out. Let's see what Glide gives us. Sprinkles! <laughs> Always dinosaur. I don't get it. I don't like dinosaur. Uh, let's search for easy. Like an easy button. Simple. Uh, go. Whatever this is, okay. So I'm thinking maybe we can do like a swipe. And so which means we need to have a user specific swipe. Which means we also need a row ID. All right, so user specific swiped on eight time column. Um, for those that aren't familiar with, where'd it go? 
Uh, for those that yeah, aren't familiar with the swipe layout, you need to have a date time column that houses when it was swiped. And it should be user specific. That way it's unique for each user. Okay. So if I edit this swipe list, we can see the last save last swiped is going to be on the swiped on. And so imagine I can you know, swipe through the different slides. I don't know why it's out of order. That's weird. One, three. Oh, <laughs> how'd that happen? Okay. In the world, glide. Okay, I'm not going crazy, right? It's not letting me do a three. Can I put in a four? Well, let me put in a four at least, and then a three. Well, I don't get it. It makes no sense. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, one, four, two, three. One, four, two, three. That is bizarre. <laughs> Oh, no worries. I'm not hearing it anyway. All right, so let's do bubbles number four. All right, so let's just, for laughs, let's order this by, even though it should already be in slide. Oh, can't we, do, we can't do sort. Why can't I sort it? Because it's always sorted by the last date swiped. One, four. Two. That's silly. So I guess it's always it's always sorted by the last swipe. So let's clear these. Five well, gonna be some issues this morning. One, two, three, four. Okay. It always sorts by last swipe date. All right. So that's fine. Otherwise, we could do some button stuff, but I'm not worried about it. OK, so then I want to not show a search bar. OK, so we can show visibility when user profile Yada, right? But the fact is, is they're not going to be signed into the app. So we can't really set tab visibility, right? So that's the tricky thing about having an onboarding screen without signing in. So when's the glide course? Custom action on the swipe that will clear the date after it's swiped. We'll clear the date after it's swiped. So then that way it'll always be in order. But would that or this or would it go back to one? Probably not. Let's try it. I like it. Okay, so swipe list general. Um, we could do some sort of it doesn't need to be a custom action. Couldn't you just do set column of this item where it just clears it? And the same thing if I do it left, I guess. Set column clear. <laughs> I don't know what this does. Let's see. One. <laughs> see, it gets me right back to one again. Oops. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess not. <laughs> oh well. Good idea though, but I don't think it works unless I'm missing something. Okay. So we'll just leave it at this. Clear all of your dates. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. So, but again, the, the tricky thing is once we get to 
how, how do we hide an onboarding tab, right? If we're not using user profiles, because we don't want this to show up always. Any ideas and from the peanut gallery? Or do we need to have user profiles in order to hide the tab? All right? I'm thinking you do. So in that regard, an onboarding screen might not always be the best option. I don't know. Okay, let's go back. Let's clear my dates. I don't know why it's in the so responsive here. <laughs> Did I call you peanuts? No, you're the peanut gallery. Peanut, yes. <laughs> I mean, for my for my esteemed gallery of experts in Glide, that's what I meant to say. All right, so we have some sort of welcome, right? They can continue. We, yeah, swiping is always a little funky, right? It might be better to do some sort of, <laughs> it might be better to have some sort of detail screen instead. I just wish, I really really wish this to, want this to work though. Um, but there's no way, yeah, there's no way to dismiss the onboarding. I mean, I guess we could, oh, you can't even do that either. Like hide the onboarding for later. I guess onboarding could always be just like the first tab or something. And then once they get to like slide four, right, we have a button on slide four that says like, uh, find a food truck, right? And this button will only be visible if slide number is four. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I can, Darren. I think it's. Uh, I. Because I, there's no way to. Because the tab visibility is all set to user profile, right? I don't know why. Oh my goodness! Why do I have somebody? That's bizarre too. Look at that. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give this a refresh. I'm thinking something is up with my web browser. I mean, right now I have it set for user profiles to be on, but eventually I'm turning it off, right? So privacy, if you send it back to public again. And because of that, yes, I originally set it, but if I like sign out and like I'm public here, right? It doesn't, it can't talk to anything. But here we have find a food truck. You see it only lives on slide four now, which is cool. And then maybe I just have this like navigate to tab food truck. So they push the button. Okay, yeah, yeah, now I'm finding a food truck. And so the onboarding tab will kind of always live there. Eh, not the best UI, but it is what it is. Unless we want them to also like say, I am a food truck, right? And maybe then they fill out some sort of form. Maybe they have to sign in then. You have to sign in to get started. And then we see a tab that only appears if they are signed in or email address is not empty. You could do something like that, right? Um, yes, code column that creates a base 64 encoded representation of the user's device, location, language, and show size. And then how did they have if you get a match? Oh my goodness. Man, I will let you figure that out and post it in the Glide form because I don't have time for that. That's a great idea, though. I'm just not too familiar with Yes Code still yet. I can do a little bit here and there. I know Manu has created some fantastic things right on the in the forum with Yes Code. <laughs> um, but it's yeah, I don't have the I don't have the ability to do that quite yet. Um, 
So anyway, we'll we'll live with this. And if I find a solution, I, I'll end up posting it at some point, I think. All right, so let's create uh, a new another button here. We'll just clone this one. Oh, that was jarring. Look at that. <laughs> let's see if I can. Um, I'm gonna build this slide with the with the slide like this. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll see how that uh, affects your view. Okay, here we go. It's so a title. We'll do. Um, I am a food truck, or uh, uh, register my food truck, or I'm a I'm a food truck owner. Something like this. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll put that back, and then this will like prompt them just to sign in. But then there's nothing stopping somebody else from signing in. So we probably want them to create a form. So yes, what we want to do here is this will be a form. The form will fill out something about food truck info. So they'll fill out some basic information here. And then on form submission, we'll add their owner email to the user's email. And so then that way, when they sign in, um, they'll already have a profile and it'll already be hooked up to their, to their food truck. So something like this, I'm a food truck owner, we'll have them fill out a form. And you know what, before I do this, I found it's always good practice to, uh, if, you're, if you're ever doing a show new screen or show form screen, to never have that be a single action, always make it a custom action because you never know if you wanna add something to it, then you have to reconfigure the whole screen or you have to reconfigure the whole form. Um, it's, been, it's gotten easier now that you can copy paste all components at once, but it just saves you the hassle. So it's better just to do create new action. And even if it's just a one action inside of here, right, where it's still just show form screen, uh, at least then you can always add to it or add conditions on it after the fact. All right, so this is a uh, register food truck. Still waiting for that promo that Glide had back a year ago when they released 2.0 to have like all of your custom actions in one spot. That'll be nice. I don't have that quite yet though. All right, so I'm a food truck owner. Now this opens a form. This form should go to food truck info. I'm not gonna have them do all of this stuff. I'll have them do most of this stuff when they uh, go to edit their food truck. Really, we just want like their um, owner email, contact email. We can have a placeholder, like this is the email for your artisan. This is the email you'll use to sign in, something like that, I don't know. Uh, make it all required. Maybe their owner name. So I need some sort of text entry for that. This will be their name, full name. I didn't have a first and last. Usually I do first and last, but for sake of time, I'll just do full name for now. So food truck name, full name, owner email, public email, public contact email, contact email, um, this email, or this is the email shown to app users, something like that. All right, let's make something up. Um, from the chat, give me a food truck name. Waiting on you. Make sure it's appropriate. 
Perfect. Bob's Burgers. I love it. All right. Bob's Burgers. So full name. So I think that's owner full name. Bob's Burgers. Bob. Yo. Okay. Uh, let's just use my email. Then contact email. Bob at Bob's Burgers. Okay, now I'm probably going to have to retype this now that I'm thinking about it because in the form, right, on submit, we want to do more than just show notification. We want to also eventually maybe send them a welcome email at some point, but then we also want this to add an email to the, um, we want to do an add row. To the user sheet and then maybe prompt them to sign in. Can we do that? Let's try that. So we'll do a create new action. We'll do an oops, add row to users where email is the owner email. Yeah. Name will be their full name. And photo, we'll have them set that later. And then prompt them to maybe sign in. You can do something like that, right? You could do a show notification as well. Uh, sign in with your owner email. Just to be redundant. All right, so this is add user. How to create multiple chat. That is a group chat. Sure, I can show you how to do that too. Okay, so save. All right, so let's, let's flesh this part out and see if this works correctly. So here we have Bob's Burgers, um, Bob Petito, and then Bob at Bob's. <laughs> Bob's burgers .com. Okay, so when I submit, it should also add a new row to the user sheet and prompt me to sign in, which it did, but <laughs> that looks abysmal. What happened here? Why, where's my sign in screen? Hopefully, this is just a builder issue and on the actual interface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, there we go. I said, wait a second. All right, cool. So now they're prompted to sign in. They can always hit cancel, right? Um, but maybe we want them to sign in now so they can sign in with Google. And when they do, right, they'll be sign. They'll sign in as that user. Let's see if I go to users here. Oh, where'd it go? It wasn't there. I was fully expecting there to be an ad row here. That's interesting. Right? We have an ad row to the user sheet, email and name. And it didn't add it. Um Maybe we put it second. That's probably not going to do anything. That's really surprising. I didn't add that row. All right, let's try something else. So let's just do uh, new truck uh, test owner. new at email.com and then pick at the same one new at email.com so sign with owner email that screen looks better okay oh and then our users okay well, that worked it's probably because i already had the email address there that's surprising yeah maybe it's because i already had my information in there. 
Because I didn't before. I had, or did I? I thought I already had typed it in at one point. Maybe I didn't. But it's in there now. So that's good. So then what I could do is uh, just do a relation now, right? So we could say, you know, relation to food truck. Or we can relate the email address to the food truck owner email. And that's that person's food truck. So then they would sign in, right? And if they sign in, then they don't see this onboarding screen anymore. So maybe this visibility is only when um, email is empty, right? So then if I sign in as that person, then I don't see the onboarding anymore and I'll just see like all the food trucks or just my food truck. Something like that, maybe. I like it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a pause right here and show how to do group chat. Uh, group chat is a little tricky. Um, basically, what you'll need to do for a group chat is you, here let me create something from scratch. I'll do a new app. We'll call this quick group chat. We'll do a glide table. I like their new logo. It's like a, you know, like a rounded square that's been split diagonally and then like shifted, right? So it kind of looks like an app that's been split. According to David, um, it's supposed to resemble a glider, like a, you know, like a glider. I don't really see it. I guess those are kind of wings, but I like it. All right, so with the Glide app, we'll create something from scratch here. All right, so basically what you need to do is we need to have a list of your chats, right? Um, inside of your chat, you need to have your participants. So I typically go based on email. You could also do row ID, um, but you need to have like user emails, right? Um, I found the best way to do this is actually using the trebuchet method. <laughs> uh, for those that are not familiar with the trebuchet method, um, I can show you it briefly here. Um, but you want to have, you know, your list of all of your email addresses. You could maybe even have like, you know, the group or the, the chat topic. Um, date created. I don't necessarily need to have an owner. If you wanted to, you could like a topic owner or a chat host. And then these are people who are besides the chat host. But um, I think if we just have everything all in one, we can do that. So I'm, not, I'm gonna, so I'm actually gonna move away from the owner screen for now. If I need to edit back, I can. All right, so then you need to find a way to add the user's emails to the user emails sheet, right? Um, the only way to currently do this is by using like a, either a type in the email addresses, all comma separated value in one block and then submit it, right? Uh, or to select them and then send it using like the trebuchet method, which I can showcase here briefly. Um, before I do, Paul, uh, is there a way to carry on watching the video later? Yes, uh, this is, I'm recording this. Um, it'll be on my YouTube channel. So I'll just watch for it later. All right, so then what we could do here is we need to pull from a list of existing users, right? Or you could do something like where you're inviting users to the chat. For now, I'll just use like where you're gonna select users. So I'll have here, you know, user one, User two, user three. Um, we can do user one at email.com. Give them an email address. And give them some random photo. Uh, guy, sure, gal.
Dinosaur. Okay, that works too. <laughs> I hate the dinosaur. I wish they would pick something else. Anyway, um, so now we have a list of users. We have to make sure that... So we have to make sure that we are minding data privacy at some point here too. So if you wanted to keep your user data anonymous, um, you would probably need to go through Google Sheets and then use like a uh, array formula or a query to bring in this, just the public information, like maybe the row ID and their name and their photo and leave their email address out of it. Um, in a separate sheet altogether and then pull that information in when doing the trebuchet method. But for now, I'll just use these email addresses for sake of time. Okay, so then when you're doing the trebuchet method, um, there's several columns you'll need to create. Um, it's, I think it works out to something like seven or nine columns. Uh, you'll need to have a, a place to have hold a temporary email. So we'll say temp email. I need to do a row ID first. So row ID. Okay, so temp email. So this is gonna be a, an email column and I'll make it user specific because this data doesn't need to live. Well, I guess we're not using Google Sheets so it doesn't really matter, but I'll make it user specific anyway. Uh, then we have a, if, I mean, we have our emails, so chat emails. Again, that's also temporary. A text column, I'll also make it user specific. We need to have an if comma, which is an if then else that looks to see if we already have emails that we've added. So if it's empty, then nothing else a comma. Then we need to have a combination. So we need to um, uh, have new or emails plus new. There's a template. I usually do like one comma two. I'm replacing one two in the comma, so the comma is the if comma. This one, I'm replacing it with the existing emails that we've already added to the chat. So this is temp chat emails. And two is gonna be that new email. Like so. Uh, we could get fancy and reference just the user profile sheet, but we either have to do it here or we have to do it in the action. Um, so I, we'll just do this for now and then we'll just do the action later. All right, then we need to have a relation back to self again. So we could do a self template column where we're doing our user profile email no replacement, and then a relation to self. We're relating ourself to ourself. Done. All right, so this gets us halfway there. Uh, this will allow us to add emails to a chat, but it doesn't allow us to remove emails in case we make a mistake and click on somebody we don't wanna actually add. So we have to also do a feature where we can remove them. Uh, fairly, it just requires a couple more columns. Um, we also wanna have a status. So is in chat icon, which is an if then else. So we're gonna say if the email address of the person is included in the list of email addresses that I've added to the chat, so my user profile, temp chat emails, then we'll show like a green checkbox, else we'll show a white square. These are the two I typically use. Like so. So you see that these people have not been added to the chat yet, so that's why it's a white square, but if I end up adding 
you know, user1 at email.com to my chat. See that user1 now has a green checkbox. That's the idea. All right, so two more columns to be able to remove them from a chat. So we could say uh, remove user. And this is going to also an if then else. And we say if the email address of the person is then the person I selected, this temp email in the, my user profile, temp email, then nothing else if the email is included in my user profile, uh, temp chat emails, then the email, else nothing. So what this does is let's say I have added user one and user two to my chat. And we see that we've selected them. And user one and user two are still in this remove user. But let's say I want to remove user one, right? So when I click on user one, right, you see that user one now goes away. And so then what we're going to do is we'll do a join list. So we'll say join remove users, where I will join the users, remove user, by a comma. And then eventually, I'm going to remove or take this and replace the temp chat emails. Yes, uh, Darren. Um, I've done the trebuchet method in almost every app I have built since I first discovered it almost a year ago. So I can create this almost in my sleep now. I know that, I mean, but look how many columns it takes, right? In order to make this happen successfully. It, I mean, I, I just can't wait for the, the time when Glide creates a, like an array column, like basic column array, right? Have them create an array column type. And then we can have an action like, Add to array, remove from array, and then do to call it a day. But we don't have that yet, so we have to build it ourselves. And this is how we can do it. Um, if you go onto the Glide forum, I created a post two weeks ago, three weeks ago, about how to do the trebuchet method, which just focuses on this. Feel free to watch that as often as you'd like, as well. All right, um, I have 15 minutes left in this stream, so we can be able to at least complete this portion of it. All right, so then lastly here, um, we need to create the chat. So I imagine, uh, first off, we need to have this list of users, which we have. Um, our app needs to be set to recognize the fact that they're users. So under privacy, we should make it public with email, and it is already great. Um, in this tab, which is our chats tab, we could have them create new chat. So we'll call this chat. Make it a detailed screen. Maybe we'll leave us, we want this to live on the user's screen. Hmm. It's really just, it's really your flavor. Uh, we could have a list of all of our chats with the ability to create a new chat, possibly. Let's try it. What if we do? Allow them to add a new chat here. So name, description, date. This is, um, and then we want them to still select the users, right? Okay, so this is, What's the name description? Is that in our chats? Where's that coming from? Oh, okay. It's from the previous uh, information. Okay, so this is chat topic. Make this required. All right, and then we need to have them select users, right? So we need to have maybe a, an inline list. We could either do it right, can't do an inline list right inside of a form here. Probably we could, okay, we'll do a button instead. We'll link out. Um, 
We'll say select debt members. And the action will be to show screen the user's screen. We'll call this select chat members again. So now when they select chat members, we'll see a list of all of our users. Um, Oh, I have row owners turned on, don't I? There we go. All right, there's a list of all of our users. And what we don't want is to view the details screen when they click on it. Instead, we want them to be able to select the users, right? So I typically choose compact list, have their name, details will be that if or is in chat icon like this. Right? right now, user one, two, and three are already in there because I've already added them. Well, user three I didn't add. Why? They should never check. Is in chat icon. Why are those green? They should be gray. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Those shouldn't be green. All right. So I'll try to get fancy by using an ad screen in here, but maybe we just need to make a custom form. All right, we'll go detail screen instead. All right, so details, chat. We could do uh, add a new chat. So we'll have a button. We can make a floating action button like this with a plus sign or something eventually. And this will be a show screen. Users. Um, but this will be a detail screen. Options will filter where the email is assigned in user. Trash all this. And then we also need to have then a chat topic user specific column here. All right, so let's add them, add some data. So text entry. So this would be the chat topic. And we're gonna have them fill out the chat topic. And then we'll have them select the users here. Details is chat icon. Why is there still a green checkbox? That makes no sense. All right, give us a refresh. Right? I'm guessing it's just a glitch. Yeah, okay, just needed a refresh. Come on, Glide. All right, so I guess we could have gone the ad route as well. I was just playing tricks on you. But we can make this look a little prettier here at least. So they have to fill out a chat topic. They have to select some users. And then the magic happens in the inline list where our action is a custom action where we're going to add slash remove members. Again, it'll also be helpful if we can have, at some point just have a multiple choice choice component, but we don't have that yet either. So we have to build it ourselves. So I typically say something like this. If the um, is chat icon is, and then if it's that gray icon, which means they haven't been added to the chat yet, then we'll have some actions that add them to the chat. Um, it requires three set column values. So I'll just add the three right now. Set column. Set column. Okay, else we need three set column values to clear. All right, all of these are going to be through this relation to self. 
because I want to send the user data to my row in the user sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the temporary email to be the email address of the person I'm clicking on. Next, I'm going to set the temp chat emails to be my user profile. Um, and then the emails new. And then I'm going to clear the uh, temp email. OK, then if we want to remove a value, we do the same thing. So in the rel self, we will set the temp email to the person we're clicking on email. Then we'll set the temp chat emails not to this emails plus new, but rather to this join remove users, which is, again, is a list of all of the users that we've already selected minus the person we just clicked on. And then lastly, we'll clear the temp email. That should work. All right, so now I should see at green check boxes. And if I click on them again, no box. All right, so if I click on all three, I know that user one, two, and three exist in my temp chat emails. All right, and as I uncheck them, you see they get removed. So here's user one, user two, and user three. Uh, we probably shouldn't select ourselves. <laughs> so we should just automatically be in the chat. So we'll filter this list out where email address is not the signed in user. Okay, and then uh, lastly, we need to join our email to this list of users. So that'll be a last column here. We'll call this uh, chat users plus self. Uh, be a template column where we'll join one comma two, where one is the our email, user profile email. Maybe um, two is our user profile temp chat emails. And then the comma is our if comma. I'm going through the user profile. You probably could just go through this route as well. But there we go. All right. And so lastly, we'll have a button to create chat. Button. All right, so we'll create the chat. And what this is going to do is we're only going to show this when um, the user profile chat topic is not empty, as well as the user profile um, emails or, uh, temp chat emails is not empty, meaning if I don't select anybody, I can't start a chat, right? So this is new chat. And once I select my first user, then I can create a chat, right? So I'll create a chat with everybody. And then this create chat, we're going to um, have a custom action. So maybe what we'll do is we will create a new action where we'll add a row to the chat screen. The chat topic will be that user profile, sorry, user profile, chat topic. Uh, the user emails will be the user profile, temp chat emails. Date created will be the current date and time. All right, then we can go back a screen. We can show notification. Chat created. Play a sound if we want. And then lastly, we'll set the, well, we're actually going to clear in ourself, we'll clear our temp email and our temp chat emails. So then that way, in our topic, so that way when we go to create our next chat, um, it'll be ready for us to go. All right, so this will be finally create chat. 
save. All right, so when I click on this create chat, I should have a new chat now and send me back a screen. All right, so now on this chats tab, we want a list of all of our chats. So we'll just have an inline list of the chats like this, right? Uh, the title can be the chat topic. Um, and then we should only show a list of topics where, so we want to filter where the user emails includes my email, right? Includes the user profile email. Which it should have. Oh, I sent I sent the wrong thing, didn't I? In my chat. Ah, ha, 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 I did. All right, hold on. Let's go back to screen. Messed it up. All right, so I'll show you what I did. So this is my new chat. You know, one, two, three. What I did was in my ad row, I chose the chat or the user emails to be this temp chat emails, which doesn't include my email address. I need the user profile chat users plus self. So then I save. So now when I create the chat, it should be there. There it is. Cool. All right, so this is our chat. <laughs> Lovely, right? Um, so the way that this works then is in your chats, right? You could split your users. I could split my user emails. I could then do a relation back to users. I'll relate the split to the user's email, match multiple, all right? And then that way I can display a list of the users in here somewhere. So maybe I have a title. Oh, let's actually do, let's make it look pretty, right? Uh, image, let's do a generate image from the chat topic. So we'll have a title <clears throat> for our chat topic, make it narrow. And then we can do an inline list of our relation to users. Uh, we'll make it, make it tiles and horizontal and circles, All right? Something like this, small. So these are all the people that belong to the chat. And then lastly, we just need to have a, um, a way for you to actually chat. Uh, there's a couple of ways. You could add a comments, which also means we need a row ID, which we don't have in here yet. Let's add that row ID. So we could use a comments, right? Um, where the topic is the row ID. And you can show the oldest first. No, we want the newest first. So then as they're adding a comment, right, it'll just show up there. Hello. And then, you know, user one can also post, hey there. I don't know why it says I'm offline. That's weird. All right, and so then um, it'll always show up here. Uh, if you go to the forum, um, I do have some CSS to make this look prettier. Let's see if we can find it real fast. Uh, for all of you watching and who are not familiar with CSS, yes, you can style things in, in Glide using CSS. Um, it is not supported by Glide, but... It is possible. <clears throat> All right, let's see if I can find this. Where is it at? Uh, comments. First comment layout. Copy. So the way you add CSS is through a rich text component. So mine looks like this. So now the add comment is at the top, which also means that I want oldest first. So then that way, um, they don't have to scroll down to add new comments. All 
right? It'll always be at the top. And the newest chat's always at the top here as well. So what's nice about using the comments component is that it doesn't add any additional rows to your app. The bad thing about it is that it's just text. So you can't add any images or anything like that. So if you need to add images and content, uh, just know you'll also need to add rows to your app. Um, and you could do some sort of third sheet here called like chat items where you have a little plus button down here where it adds a new um, row to your chat items sheet that's linked via this row ID. And then you could have a multiple relation from this row ID to the chat items and then display it in an inline list. Uh, you could do something like that as well. Does anybody want me to sh show that? Or are you happy with this? Talking specifically to Larissa who asked the question about showing group chat. I'm happy either way. Uh, my templates, in the template store, I have this working already. So I, I do have a group chat template, which has all of this already pre-built. So now you know how to build it. So if you want to purchase the template, you can go back and watch this video as well and kind of figure out how I did it or uh, go from there. All right, so that's how you do a group chat. And then what's nice is that if you want to be able to remove users from the chat eventually, you just create a link to screen back to your user sheet because of, uh, and then you want to eventually get this screen again. Um, but it, you'll pre-populate your list of users with the, um, you'll pre-populate this temp chat emails with the list of users already. And then you'll just do an overwrite. Uh, inline list, sure, okay, we can do that. All right, so if you don't wanna go the comments route, this will be the last thing I'll be able to see today. All right, so this is, you'll add a new table. You'll call it like chat items. Uh, Darren, I'll answer your question in just a second. Chat items. Um, you'll want to have the grab the chat ID and then whatever information. So it's like, you know, the message, an image. Uh, who wrote the message, the date when it was written. Something like this. Uh, eventually want to relate, probably want a row ID here too. Um, you'll probably want to relate to the user. So we're going to relate the person who wrote the message back to the user sheet. And then grab their name. So like username. Yeah, lookup. Uh, rel user name. And then their image. User image. We'll do a lookup of the user photo. Okay, so then in your chat, instead of a comments component, you can have a button with a little you know, plus icon or something down here as well. Again, um, you probably want a custom form, but I'll just do show form for now. Show form, show form, okay. And this form goes to like the chat items. Yeah, you could also do this in line as well using just some user specific columns and then like a button that says like add message. I'm gonna do formers for simplicity's sake. So chat items, uh, the chat ID we're gonna grab from the screen. Um, the date we'll add from a special value. The owner will add from the signed in user. And here we now have a message and an image. The image we can make optional, but the message will be required. We do something like this, hey there. All right, and then user one can respond, you know, yo, 
with an image. Just pick anything. And then we display those values in the relation. So then we just do from the chat a relation to chat items. We match the row ID to the chat items, uh, chat ID, match multiple. And then we'll probably want to display it in a card view. So like this. I wish the image here was dynamic, meaning if they didn't attach an image, then there's no space there. Otherwise, it puts the placeholder in there. Um, but then for like the message, I like to have the message in the details because then um, if there's more than, you know, if there's lines of text, it'll fit it in. Uh, for the header, we can do the timestamp, make it look pretty, right? And then if you want to, you can add the avatar of the person. There's the user image and then username. And then you'd want this in reverse order, right? So you would add it where, you would sort it where the time or the date, whatever that is, in reverse order. All right. Uh, awesome chat. All right, she's up at the top here. So this image is kind of jarring and uses up a lot of real estate. So if it were me, I would turn the image off. And then I might, I probably wouldn't use this layout. I might do something like the outline or no line at all. Something like that. So that's what I would do if you wanted to use an inline list. All right, last thing here, Darren, uh, probably simple, but how can I add a row from an inline list? How can I add a row from an inline list and have it go directly to the form view for that new row? Add a row from an inline list. So for example, if I have this inline list of chat messages, you want to add a row from this item. Like if I click on this item, it adds a new row somewhere and then I go directly into that item. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so you probably want something like, now, there's a variety of ways to, to do this correctly. Um, I imagine that, for example, if seven users have access to this row, go to the details view. You wanna add to the inline list, add a row to the inline list, and then go directly to the view for that new row. Yes, you can do that too. Um, so for example, here I'm doing a form view, right? Right now on submit for this form, I'm just showing a notification, but what I could do is I could create a new action where yes, I show notification, let's say, but then I can also view the details screen of this item. And this item means the item I just created in the form. Uh, just so you see what I'm talking about, I'll make the title the message. And I'll say, you know, go to message item. Right? So let's say, um, you know, new message. Right? When I hit submit, it should take me to the view detail screen of this message item, like that. I use this trick all the time now, because um, it's super handy. I wanna create an item and go directly to that item right when I first create it, right? So yes, and not only does it take me there, but yes, if I go back, it's still there as well. I can always dive back into it again a second time. Is that what you were referring to, Darren? <clears throat> Thank you.
So again, just so you see what that action looks like. Like, and so in the form itself, on submit, you can do some sort of action and then show the detail screen for this item. If you need it to be an independent screen rather than the normal detail screen for the item, you can always do a show detail or a show new screen for this item as well. Can you go to the form rather than details? So, I create an, so I create a new item, I hit submit, and then you want there to be a form screen, another form screen for that item? Another form screen for that, so it's, it's like a second form screen off of the first form? I don't think so, because, <clears throat> I, I don't think so, only because once I submit the form, I'm still living in this environment of, of the chat screen, unless I tell it to view something else. And so anything in this action thread is related to the, like the original thing I clicked on, not the detail screen. So I can't do like show detail screen or show form, right? If I do like a show form screen here, it's this form screen is based off of the original item. It's not based off of this item I just created. So I would have to view the detail screen and I'm at detail screen. I could have a custom form on there possibly where, so the way that would work, I think that's maybe what Darren is referring to, is instead of having a detail screen, I could do a show new screen for this item, right? So it's not gonna be, just so you see what the, so like, so like here, like this is the detail screen where we have the title, the date, and the owner. And I'll add something stupid on here just so you see that this is actually the details screen um, text. <laughs> oh, come on. Text. There we go. Details screen. All right, so this is the details for all these things. But what I could do is upon submit is I could do a show new screen which is independent of that detail screen. So here is a you know, message to submit. Now I'm in message two. And you see this is a completely different interface, but it's still tied to that same row. And then on here, what I could do is I could have, I could create in the chat or in that secondary sheet, some user specific columns, which act like a chat or to act like a form, I mean, just like I did here with the users screen in order to create a new chat. All right, this is like a custom little form. You do the same thing um, when you go to create that new item. You create you know, some text entries and some buttons and then you click on submit and that submits a new form for that new sheet somewhere else and then takes you back a screen back to whatever, that's possible. Um, so you have a details view of a contact, all right? So let's say this is my contact, right? I have a details screen for the contact. And then an inline list under details for notes. An inline list under details for notes. I want to be able to create a new note button that takes the user to a note form. Create a new note button that takes the user to a note form for that specific user. Right, so here's a list of, here's, here's the user's details screen, um, inline list. Here's a list of maybe notes, in my case, maybe chats, right? 
for this particular user, so I could filter the list, you know, filter where user emails includes the screen email, right? And then you want a button to add a new item here and then get taken directly into that item. So yeah, it's basically what I just said. So here we could add a button. <clears throat> we'll say, you know, add item. And it could just be a form. So show form screen. It just basically, where is this inline list being sourced from, right? If it's a list of notes, if you have a notes sheet, right? In my case, it's chats. So I'll do a show form screen and I'll say something like a new chat or new item. Um, and so here, I'm, you know, let's pretend this is my notes. Um, and then however you're relating that user. So here's uh, for the user emails, right? You would want to specify the screen that they're on. So this is the screen column and then that user's email, right? To be that user email. So that'll specify that person and then date time created. So date and time, right? So this is a new chat, right? And then for the form, again, same thing. So you would want to, you can create a new action where you're showing notification. And then you're going to the details view. So I'll show details for this item, which is the item I just created, that new note, let's say. So this is um, create and show. This is a new chat or her chat two. I submit, and I get taken directly into chat two for this user. Right? And so then you could have whatever your notes are, right? And if I go back a screen, you now see I have that next item. So here's like chat three. I get taken right into chat three. I can go back a screen and there's chat three. So yeah, super, super, super handy little trick. This is why I've started using more forms um, rather than custom forms. Custom forms are still brilliant and I still use them all the time. Um, but I really like this ability to simply on a form, right? Uh, be able to on submit, navigate directly there. Right, it's fantastic. Or you can actually show the edit screen as well, right? So if you want them to dive into an item, like you create a new item and then you want to edit that item right away. I did that before with something else. I forget which, forget which app I did that on, but I wanted them to navigate directly into it and then manip and then edit the information. Maybe it was like create a new user and then like edit the edit user information. All right, so hopefully this chat was uh, instructive and fun. Um, thank you very much for all of your questions and uh, keeping, the, keeping the, uh, the, the presentation going, keeping the chat going here. Um, I'll plan to do these maybe once every few weeks. Uh, so just keep your eye out in the Glide forum for, uh, for these chats. Uh, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll also get notified of these in case you're not in the chat forum uh, and you're on YouTube, you'll get notified of those as well. So uh, thank you again for participating and for watching, and we'll see you in the Glide 4. Talk to you guys soon.